Hello, and welcome to my video on 52 factorial. 52 factorial is a very big number, it being 8.0658 times 10 to the 67th, and I think 52 factorial is a fascinating number, and a really fascinating number to try to quantify in our minds just how big this number is. So, what we're going to do to try to quantify that is we're going to take a clock, pretend you have a clock that you can set to whatever time you want, and we're going to set it to 52 factorial seconds, or 8.0658 times 10 to the 67 seconds. And what we're going to do is every 1 billion seconds, we're going to take the one real world application that 52 factorial has, and that is a deck of cards, because a deck of cards has 52 cards, and so there are 8.0658 times 10 to the 67 different ways that these 52 cards can be arranged. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our timer, and every 1 billion seconds off of our timer, we're going to flip 5 cards over, face up. And what we're going to do is every single time we see a royal flush, that's what we're going to look for. Anything else, and we're going to wait another 1 billion seconds. So let's write our 1 billion seconds here. Now, on average, a royal flush has a 1 in 649,739 chance of happening, which is a very small chance. So let's keep dealing. Another 1 billion seconds just went by, and no royal flush, so we're going to wait another 1 billion seconds. Now, to get the probability of getting this number, if we wait every 1 billion seconds, we can figure out the average amount of time that we'll have to wait which will be um, 1 billion times 649,739, which is 6.497 times 10 to the 14th, is the uh, average amount of time it'll take us to get one royal flush. So let's keep dealing until we get a royal flush. And there we go. We got a royal flush. So now what are we going to do that we have our royal flush? Well, we're going to take a singular drop of water, 0 0.5 milliliters of water, out of the ocean. And to get an idea of how big that is, that is a single drop of water, barely the size of a paper plate, and that is about the size of my hand. Very, very small. And we're going to take that out of the ocean every single time we're dealt a royal flush. Now, there are 2.664 times 10 to the 25th drops of water in the ocean. And... If we take our previous estimate that it'll take us 6.47 times 10 to the 14th seconds for every single time we take a drop of water out of the ocean, we can multiply the number of drops in the ocean together to figure out when the ocean will be drained. So times 2.664 times 10 to the 25th. And we get 1.7309 times 10 to the 40th. 7309 times 10 to the 40th. Now, a billion seconds is equal to around 31 years, so you're going to be dealing yourself, we're going to imagine in the simulation you can live forever, and you're dealing yourself cards every 31 years or so, or every billion seconds off of your imaginary timer that we set up. So now we're going to keep dealing cards, and the ocean is currently completely emptied after these past, you know, billions of seconds have went by. So, every single time the ocean gets emptied, we are going to roll five dice. So we have five dice here. We're gonna roll five dice. Now, what we're, our, our goal with these dice is to get a Yahtzee. Everybody's played Yahtzee. You need five of the same dice. And the chance of getting a Yahtzee is roughly one in 1,296. So, just like with the last one, if it'll take us this amount of time on average to empty the ocean, we multiply it by the odds of getting a Yahtzee, so times 1296, and we get 2.24 times 10 to the 43rd, times 10 to the 43rd, and so after rolling our Yahtzee, you keep, keep on, keep on emptying the ocean up until the Yahtzee gets rolled. Now we're going to keep dealing ourselves some more cards. And remember, every 1 billion seconds, we're dealing ourselves 5 cards. And once we hit a royal flush, we will take 1 drop of water out of the ocean. And however long it takes us to empty the ocean, we then roll 5 dice. And once we get a Yahtzee, what we're going to do is we are going to fill out a March Madness bracket. For those of you who don't follow sports at all, a March Madness bracket is 64 teams 
or 32 teams, sorry, that play um, every March, and there is a total of 63 games that go on between all of these teams. It is 64 teams, and it's 32 in the first round, 16, 8, and, you, and so on and so on. So, if anybody is correctly able to predict the entire bracket, that would be, since there's 63 games, a chance of 2 to the 63rd. So, just look at our other things. Every single time we roll a Yahtzee after emptying the ocean, after dealing ourselves a royal flush, after waiting a billion seconds, we will time this by 2 to the 63rd, and we will fill the March Madness bracket. So, 2 to the 63rd, and we will get 2.069 times 10 to the 62nd. And then, from here, every single time we get a... March Madness bracket correct after doing all of the following preconditions. Now pretend every single billion seconds the only way we progress at all in this simulation is by dealing ourselves more cards. So we're going to keep dealing until eventually we see another royal flush, you know, however long it takes. And we are going to once empty the ocean, once rolled a Yahtzee, once completed a correct Mar March Madness bracket we are going to be asked to flip a coin 19 times and it land on heads every single time, which is simple. That is a 2 to the 19th chance. So if we continue the pattern and multiply this by 2 to the 19th, we get a number that is 1.0808 times 10 to the 68th. And that is just breaching above our number up here of 8. 0.0658 times 10 to the 67th. So it would take 1 billion seconds of waiting, dealing yourself a royal flush after however long it takes, and then emptying the ocean. Every single time the ocean is emptied, you will roll five dice and you will look for a Yahtzee. And every single time that the Yahtzee happens, you will fill out a March Madness bracket and the 2 to the 63rd chance of the March Madness bracket, every single time you get it, you will flip a coin 19 times, and it has to land on heads every single time. And once all of those events happen, right, because after you empty the ocean, you refill it, and you continue the simulation, until every single one of these events has all happened, and you have successfully flipped 19 heads of a coin. You flipped heads 19 times. And then, and only then, will your timer that we set at the very beginning to 8.0658 times 10 to the 67 seconds, then it will be finished. So that was my simulation about the number 52 factorial and how it relates to a deck of cards. But I think in the video I didn't really express just how much it does relate to a deck of cards. So whenever you have a deck of cards and you shuffle it, there is a almost guaranteed chance that the way you're about to shuffle it has never been done before in history because the number 52 factorial is 8.0658 times 10 to the 67th which is an incomprehensibly large number that we can't really wrap our minds around but a good comparison you can make is if you take the entire time that the universe has existed which the biggest estimate i could find is 13.8 billion years old you multiply it by 365, by 60, by 60, by 24 for to turn into seconds. And you get 4.351968 times 10 to the 17th seconds. Now, if you were to shuffle a deck of cards and assume there's no repeats, every single second since the beginning of the universe, you would not have found all ways to shuffle a deck of cards. Because if you take... 8.0658 times 10 to the 67th and subtract it by the amount of seconds the universe has been around for, then you get not even a dent in 52 factorial, barely even noticeable comparatively. And if you were to divide the numbers, you would get 0 0.050, zeros, so 0 0.000005% of all possible deck variations. So even if you were to shuffle a deck um, 1.2 billion times a second, you still will not even come close. Even 1.2 quintillion times a second, 99 quintillion times a second, you would not come close to the amount of ways there is a, you can shuffle a deck of cards. And that's sort of why I 
chose 52 factorial is because I think it's so fascinating comparing it directly to something that everybody knows being a deck of cards and it being such a incomprehensible number and trying to sort of simplify it down is is what I wanted to do and I took inspiration from that from a Vsauce video that came out a while ago that I saw where he sort of did the same thing with different comparisons but I did all my own math and all my own uh, probability multiplying and figured everything out on my own and sort of did my own interpretation of it which I just found the reason I did it is that 52 factorial is a very interesting number and it's weird to think that throughout the entire existence of humanity we will never never once shuffle a deck of cards any way that is we will never shuffle it enough times to get all of the possible variations and 99.99999% percent of the time you shuffle a deck of cards it's new it's brand new and it's never been seen before and i think that's just fascinating which is why i did my simulation on it